presentation. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful day today. This weather is very intriguing to me. The weather man's right. It's supposed to be 78 degrees next Thursday. Hmm. And, and it's amazing what uh, we see in this day and time. But anyway, we're going to be in the book of Isaiah chapter 5 <clears throat> and verse 7. So if you have a friend who wants to study along with us and uh, just tell them to click on Works Assemblies of God and we'll be glad to try to answer the questions you have if something you need. All right. Verse 7 says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah had pleasant plants and looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Now, the Lord is illustrating here how beautiful an orchard is and the plants. And what you have to do if you got an orchard, you have to prune it, you have to get the weeds out, all kind of things, and you have to uh, work, work with it. And, uh, but what he sees, when it comes to the people loving loving him and doing something for him, he don't see nobody wants to do anything. And all of us know there's ever planted a garden, uh, worked around the orchards, things like that. To have a beautiful garden and beautiful fruit, you have to work at it and really work at it. And the same thing translates over to our life. If we want to really please the Lord, we have to work for him. Like the service this morning, everybody was praising the Lord. Everybody felt something. And it was just a joy to be in the house of the Lord. And we came this morning with the expectation to receive something from the Lord. Verse 8 says, Woe unto them who join house to house, who lay field to field till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. So how many people like to be alone? Sometimes we just need a time to be alone. And what that really means is sometimes we need to get off to ourselves and just talk to the Lord. And it'll be a time when you'll be lonely. You won't know what to do with yourself. And the pressure sets in and different things. And sometimes people go to extremes. And the devil will tell them they have nothing to live for. And nothing's going on in their life. And if you listen to the devil, he'll have you wandering around. It was like when the children of Israel left Egypt. What if Moses hadn't been there to lead them? They wandered round, round, and round. And also in the book of St. John, he says, the blind will lead the blind, and both will fall into a ditch. So sometimes it's good to be alone, and sometimes we need to be around people to uplift one another, encourage one another, and feel the confidence that Christ brings and the love that Christ brings in our heart. And this is a woe. When God says, woe, something's going to happen, all you got to do is tell a mule, a horse, woe, and they'll stop. So that means stop. Think about it. How would Christ handle this? How would Christ do this? All right, verse 9. In my ears saith the Lord of hosts of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without habitation. Now, <clears throat> what is the house without God in it? Wouldn't they? Devil's workshop. That's right. <laughs> Just make that connection in your life. What was the house before you got saved? Now, he's not actually talking about a home you live here. He's talking about this earthly tabernacle. Second Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 7 says, This earthly tabernacle. Well, what was it like before Christ came into it? What was your life like? What was you going through? It's like when the newsman said the storms is coming. Well, out in the West, what do they do? Tornadoes is coming. Well, we've built us a shelter. We've got a secure place to get in. And what safer place could you be in the arms of Christ? We could have the finest home in the world. We could have this, that, and other. But if we don't have the love of God in the house, it's nothing there. And that's why it's so essential for the dad to be the priest of the household. A house without a home, without Christ, it's just a building. Uh, I was a clip the other night. I watched this man ask, why are y'all so happy? 
why is this, when I come in this house, look like everybody's so full of joy? And they said, well, sometimes we'll put on a song, we'll sing a song about Jesus, this and that other. We have Jesus here. He couldn't make a connection. He was blind because he never accepted Christ. All right. Ten acres, <clears throat> yes, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and a seed of a homer shall yield, yield one April. Now, this is the promise, and God is saying, what I'm going to give you in the promised land, 10 acres is going to give you all kind of things. Well, we think now, what, what if I had a garden that had 10 acres in it? Now, he's talking to 3 million people here. He's on that journey. And one man made an illustration the other night and said, do you realize how many gallons of water it took to quench the thirst of the other 3, 3 million people plus the animals. And when Moses would speak to the rock, the water would keep running and running and running. And it was like something in the neighborhood of 350,000 gallons. A camel can drink, if I'm not mistaken, they can drink about 40 gallons at one time and go, I don't know how many miles. But I don't how about I don't know I know a cow it'll drink in the neighborhood on a hot day, but like over there when it's 104 degrees, a cow here would drink uh each time they drink about seven gallons on a hot day, and they go twice a day. So you can just imagine how many gallons of water it took. And and uh, you know, when people uh, well, if we didn't drink soft drinks, this, that, and the other, we would drink uh when I was working on the power line, we'd have a five gallon cola. And the four of us, we we drink that dry every day. And with something with more than that, too, when we ate lunch, we'd always drink a soda pop or something along with it. But <clears throat> just imagine what that was. And this talks about how much, how would how would all this come together, and all the seeds, everything would yield. And you think, look what God had made for these people. And when all the murmuring and complaining started, then what did he do? What if he would just cut the blessings off? But he didn't. And on the side on the, on Friday before the Sabbath day, he was seeing a double portion of the manna down because they didn't have to worry about cooking anything. But when we was real small, Mama she'd cook a pot of beans be that high, be two gallons of beans. I asked one day, I said, Mama, why are you cooking so many beans? I'm not cooking tomorrow, son. I said, why? It's Sunday, and you don't do nothing on God's day. One day I had a button come off my shirt, and I went and got her thing, uh, what you call it? Uh, sewing kit? Yeah, sewing kit. And uh, I said, button Mama, sew my button on that. You don't do that, son. I said, every stitch out make your devil a stick it in your eye. <laughs> you don't do nothing like that. And they were so prone to the old custom. You know, they wouldn't, eat, they wouldn't sew a button on us. They wouldn't do nothing. So but, down right, but we would uh, we'd always milk the cows every Sunday. Like, well, why would oh, do yeah. this? That's what I was going to ask you. How did we feed the chickens? Because when we worked on the dairy farm, we had to take care I of know. the cows. All right, the Bible says if the yoke is stuck in the mud, you get it out. And God understood that. Oh, okay. See, it, it, it was the way the Jews taught. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like, uh, what if what if the doctors didn't show up on the Sabbath day at the emergency room? What if the police officer took off? Well, there's no cops on the scene. Well, we'll go rob this store. We're going to stand down. And God understands that. Oh, okay. See, when you get taught in these old customs, old ways, but the thing of it was, see, God was still down with him. He did sit down tomorrow. I said, you didn't worship God a couple of hours on the Sabbath day. You served God all day. Yeah. That's one thing you have to respect the black people about. They said, we're like, Rabbits get to the church, but Terrapins leaving. <laughs> they don't get no. Their services last about four hours, easy. And <clears throat> everything that God wants us to have, if we use our head, it's our force. It was just like a course this morning. I don't know how many times we've sung that, but I stand completing Him. Lift up holy hands and magnify Him. I'm so completing Him and. That is so that is so overwhelming when you think what God would do. We we're so incomplete, we're so insufficient without him. 
And that's what he's relating here to. <clears throat> now he takes a, a really strong turn. And the, uh, the people that love to drink, now most people say there's nothing wrong with it. Well, let's see what Isaiah have to say about it. All right. Woe unto them who rise early in the morning that they follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them. Now, what is a woe? That means stop, think. Now, when somebody tells you it's hard to take a drink, no, it's not. Let's go to the book of Abaca. That is the 35th book of the Bible. You get over next to Zephaniah. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2 and verse 15. Now, a lot of people said Jesus drank wine, on and on and on. But you make up your mind after we read this first description. Now, Jesus offered them wine at the Last Supper, right? Mm -hmm. Apaka is before you get to uh, Matthew. It goes through Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Nahum, Habakkuk. If you went to Zephaniah, you went too far between Zephaniah and Nahum. And underline this in your Bible. Somebody asked you a question about it. It says, woe to him who gives his neighbor drink, who puts your bottle to him and makes him drunk. Also that you may look upon their nakedness. So what will drunk people do? After they've had a few, a little bit too much to drink. Hallelujah. Woe means stop. Don't do it. So if Jesus had offered them wine that would have got them drunk, what would he have done here? What would he do to me and you? Now, how many of these people in the county here say, well, I get, I'm get, i making this beer. I want to sell you this, my whiskey, my brand, this, and that, and other. It's wrong. Now, a lot of people ask me, is it wrong if I work in a store and sell beer? No. Why? Because that's not your beer. Who owns that beer? The man that owns the store. Now, if you feel guilty about it, and that's up to you. But anybody would sell beer and wine, coolers, and this, and that, and other. So what's he saying here? What went to a man that gives it to them? Our places in their hand. It's wrong. It's a sin. So would Jesus have placed something in the disciples' hands at the last supper that would represent his blood? Because the wine, he said, take this. This is the blood of the New Testament. And as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And he gave them the, 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 the bread. Hallelujah. All right, now go back to Isaiah. <clears throat> But so many people today say, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. Yes, it is. How many how many homes have been broke up because of alcohol? How many children have been without because of it? How many of them have suffered because of it? How many of them have scars on the inside of them because of it? Look what it's doing to our culture today. Then throw the drugs in on top of it. What is the, the what does the world do? I heard a man say uh, he sold a, a young couple some cocaine. They took it, went down the road and wrecked, run into a farm tractor, killed them both. He said, I didn't tell them to, what to do with it. And I said, why do you keep doing that? It's easy money. I said, well, you know, uh, that's not a good thing. He said, well, it's like, kind of like it's right here. If you put $5,000 in the barrel and there's five rattlesnakes in there, I got a chance I could reach it and get that money and jerk that snake out of there. I said, what if the snake bit you? Well, that's my bad luck. Hmm. Like this fentanyl. Think about it. Now they put that stuff in marijuana, mm -hmm. used it, and all these people sitting in the, the government houses, they know this. 
They play a dumb. They play dumb to us. How does the CDC know all these things? Anybody that issues medicine, any type of medicine, they know the effects of it. They know what it can do. Like a doctor told me the other day, she said, I'm going to give you this medication, but I'm not going to give you the three pills. I said, what's that going to do? We're going to see. He said, if you take it a couple of weeks, you'll, you're not careful, you get hooked on it. Now, she could have wrote me a prescription of 15 pills. But you see how honest she was? And I said, I really respect you for that. Now, some of them will just what? Refill it, refill it, refill it, refill it. What, what is it? They don't care. Why? See, exactly. And they go, and uh, though I did night with Thurston, he said, we'll do this. And then well, I, there's come back. So I'm sorry. We can't, we can't uh, give you this cream. And he said, why? Your insurance don't cover it. Been me. You know what I've done? Heck with insurance. I'll just hand it to him. Dude. Take it on. But now anybody goes in with a card and they'll never ask you no question about nothing. Here's a man, 93 years old, screaming in pain. And that, that was supposed to help him. They put a little bit on him and said, you can get it through a prescription. They should have been like, not through Dr. Bohan, John. Yeah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I've been for her for 20 years and she don't give me nothing. But what is enough is enough. That's one thing I liked about Dr. Lewis. When Johnny was having his problems, he said, I'm going to give you this, Johnny, and see if it'll help you. If it don't, I'm not going to write a prescription for it. And that's a, that's a good doctor. That's an honest person. That shows you it's a person who's got a heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> but when a person is half lit, what do they care? What all they want. And when you see people sitting around, all they want is another drink. And when hospice comes in, what happens? When they start loading you up with drugs. You know what, you know what most people die from? malnutrition starvation why because you don't want anything to eat you lose your appetite and if you just keep doing that that's why robert he wouldn't take nothing would he he said i'm, I'm gonna just put it in the hand of the lord and that's the way to look at it that's the way to look at everything all right verse 12 says then the harp and the vial and the tablet and the pipe and the wine are in the feast but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. Now, what does that mean? What happens when people go to the rock concert and this, that, and the other? They get bummed out of their mind. That's what he's talking about. They get out there and beat on a guitar and a music in it. If you, if you, you can't call it music. It's nothing but a roar. Now, how many of them can you understand a word they're singing? singing? Like a man said, I wrote the perfect country song. I was drunk the day my mama got out of prison. I went to pick her up in the pickup truck, but she got run over by a dang don't train. <laughs> really get that? <laughs> what kind of song is that? <laughs> but people would scream and holler. What did Hank Jr. come out? He come out on the stage half drunk. I'm carrying all that old family tradition. Oh, they just scream and holler. But what did what did they ever amount to? Then you see that right there, and you later on they get in life, they can't hardly get a bite. Oh, wow, I love Jesus. Don't hand me that. Don't hand me that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what does what does alcohol do? Conscious of this, that, and the other. Like last week. This guy was watching the football game. This screen is in a man's house, a thousand dollar TV. Well, that referee made a mistake. He started arguing with his friend, but he but he destroyed the television, jerks it off the wall, throws it in the floor, jumps up down on it. Here they go to fighting over a blame ball game. And what good what could it what good could it do? And then I imagine they had a was partying, you know. Look at the tailgate parties. 
And now the if you seen the new tailgate, the forward gate, the Chevy, I got a little seat on it. You can sit, you can sit with harmony. Your cup holders have said that. What's that fault? Put your beer in. We're gonna make you comfortable because you ain't worried about going about watching the ball game, no way. Hallelujah. I had a pig roast one time, and I thought, well, you know, nobody show up. I got three or four kegs of beer out there. And I looked, and that field was this is a lead back of field. It was plumb full of people. And one of them got hung up in the uh bought by a fence. We had to get him out of this back to his clothes off and get him out of that fence. Are you having a good time? Oh, yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah, you know where he's at. So <laughs> and they was playing. Well, they called it playing. Put it that way. Praise the Lord. So these two verses of scripture, what are we seeing today? But how many people really consider the hand of God? When God moves, they have no idea of it. What's going on? Verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, no knowledge of what, what Christ can do for them. How many people has prayed on Monday morning? Oh, God, if you take this away from me. Oh, Lord, if I can just make it through the day. And you know what Jesus is saying? Suffer, suffer, suffer. Who caused that? If you had ate something like that, oh, I'd never put that back in my mouth. I see them take a drink of that liquor and they go, ooh, the office, ugliest faces you ever seen. I was, oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> they'd be burning. Out and, and one of them, sometimes they bark and they said, look at him. He's buying a, a Buick from you. I was always saying, they'd be throwing up. What's he doing? Oh, he's buying a Buick from you. That filthy stuff, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, but where is the knowledge of God at today? Tucker Carlson asked one of the girls in the interview, what's going on up there in Ashby College? She said it's the mood of the Holy Spirit. Well, tell me what you mean. Then they'll tell us, they praying for us and stuff like that. They don't even know what the Holy Spirit means. And now they ask the, the, the dean of the college, when are you going to start back your classes? He put a clip back. As long as the spirit of God is moving, I'm not, start, I'm not starting nothing back. Because these young people, who's up there singing? Who's up there preaching? There hasn't been a Bill, a, a, a Bill Gaither singer there. There hasn't been somebody like John Hagee or any other. Somebody just goes in and, and all of a sudden give a message in tongues or something like that, and they just have a wonderful time. They just change about who's who's this singer? It's it's a worshiper, and everyone goes in there. They don't sit there like this. They end up their hands up praising and glorifying God. And it's been miracles. There's been people up there talking about what how they got delivered and all kind of things. It's been going on now uh, since last Tuesday. Round the clock. Wow. Yeah. And it's one now that took a fight in there in Texas. And what is it? God is trying to wake people up. Now, look what happened to the boy. They thought going to get killed in the football game. Now, he's wearing a shirt. Praise God. He saved my life. He used to have saying anything about God. But look at look look what God is doing. And you and people don't understand it. What did he say in Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 16? Signs and miracle and wonders will follow them that believe. What <laughs> it was 20 people went there to start with to pray. And it just caught a fire. Now it's been people from Indonesia, they traveling from the world to come out and say, What is this about? What is this? Well, the pastor used to be down at Vision Assembly. They up there. Roger and the Mall Moore, they took off up there. Glory, hallelujah. And <clears throat> like John said this morning, what if something like that happened here? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, yeah. Well, back in uh, on the Azusa, Azusa Revival, it started in 1905. You know where it started at? In a blacksmith shop. 
a man was shoeing horses and the Holy Spirit failed. They come out and they started saying, what's going on here? And all of a sudden, a bunch of people started going to that blacksmith shop for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. Then they said, well, nobody go to work. For 30 days, where are these people supposed to be working? Everybody's somewhere praising God about something. <laughs> what would that happen if it happened around here? They apply, Jim, where's all the people at? Where's your truck driver's at? They go over here to holler, they over here in the church, out here just praising God. Yes. And when the Assemblies of God got birthed, they was in Hot Springs, Arkansas. They had a brush arbor. And what that was, they cut some trees down and set four poles up and put the brush up for the sun. They started praying. And a man from Ohio had two crippled kids. He heard about it. And he told his wife, I'm hooking the mules up. I'm going to the hot springs. He got there. The revival was over. And he was crying, sitting on a stump. That's where that song comes uh, about the stump. And I uh, can't think of the name of it right off. But anyway, he said, Lord, I tried. I pushed the mules as hard as I could. He's sitting over there crying. I didn't get you in time. And all of a sudden, these two little boys said, Daddy, don't cry. Don't cry. And he almost fainted. He realized, how did they get off that wagon? And God honored him, his faith, because this time I'm going to help my babies. And the miracle took place. Now, if you tell a millionaire that or a billionaire that, something like that, they look at you like, what are you talking about? I mean, Tucker Carlson, he... He's in prime time, and he never understood what the gift of the movement of the Spirit of God is. All right, how many people in the world, well, let's put this, how many people in this county on Sunday morning did even do that in the church and say praise the Lord? Well, it's like John said this morning, um, a lot of those college kids had never seen nothing like that before. Right, never they been, never been to on. church. Didn't have no idea. They may have been from. How many different states? And they just, it's no name singers, no name preachers, no name nobody, but who shows up? The power of God. Hallelujah. Now, there was one place I showed you last night. I forget where it was at. It fell over there and his stadium held 80,000. It was packed. But nobody was, no name preacher, no name singers. They just went there and was just, it's like y'all called this morning. Look how many responded to that. Then the power of God are just, I mean, just stirring and moving so strong, so powerful. All right. Those of us knows the Lord, we know what it means. That's what he's saying here. All right. And their honorable men have famished and their multitudes have dried up. For thirst, not water down now. What did the Beatitudes say? <laughs> they that thirst and hunger after what? Righteousness <laughs> shall what be filled. That's what they're looking for. That's what they that's what they receiving. That hungry soul is crying out. That's what he's talking about here. When you don't have no knowledge of God, and when you never felt the Spirit of God, and you don't know anything about the Spirit of God, and some wacky preacher comes along and tells you, well, that's top when the, the disciples went out, you can't supposed to do that. You're supposed to set up there with a towel and never look off. They don't know a bit more about what's going on in a like a UKF looking at a gate. Which way do I go? Hallelujah. They don't have enough power in them to make a huge demon even get scared. It takes the power of the spirit of almighty God to wake people up. And it's just so, it's so sad to hear all this nonsense. The reformed church, a lot of these so-called miracles they talk about when I, with the apostles. Well, I beg the difference, brother and sisters. It's as strong today as it was the other day, any other day. I mean, what happened out there? Just on a Tuesday morning. They weren't even supposed to be in church on Tuesday morning. You can't go to church at certain times. See? God can move anywhere he wants to anytime. He, all he needs is a few people that will honor him. Glory. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> underline this in your Bible. Therefore, hell is what? Enlarge herself. 
Really get that. Why? Because the previous verse, there's no knowledge. There's no honorable men. There's nobody standing up for God. So what's left? Hail. And open her mouth without measure. Think about that. This is a very serious verse of scripture. All right. And neither glory and their multitudes with their palm, the little things like the cheerleaders use. And he who rejoices shall descend into it. From what? The party lifestyle. What is the party lifestyle going to carry you? What did Madonna say? I'll be glad we get down there. Oh, we're going to have a party. We're going to have music. We're going to have drink, wine, this, that, that. Honey, I, I'm going to tell you what you're going to get down there. It's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth and out of darkness. Now, you want to get a version of it. It's right over and sit in a cancer ward all day long. I'll either do this. Go to the VA and just set the welcome center and see those people come in there with no legs, arms, this, that, and other. I'll go sit in an emergency room. I didn't know this library until the night. You know, uh, a lot of the EMS workers takes all kind of medication to oh, yes. face what they have to go through with. Doctors even does. It, 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 it can really get, in, uh, uh, you know, get on your nerves and, and bring you down. Uh, we wonder, wonder how, how big is hell? It's without measure. I mean, just think about it. And I, as Isaiah just saying, simply because they have no, no desire for God, they they have no thirst for God, they done famished and everything else. Glory, hallelujah! What do we hear on television every time you turn it on? If somebody gets saved, oh, is that so? Now, what we what if the president said, "I want to go to that college." I want to leave everybody at that college. Just go there and just praise the Lord. Well, what if the vice president said that? What if the miracle. governor of Kentucky yeah. said that? Be what about the mayor? <coughs> it's a move that nobody knows anything about because they're not accustomed to it. Hallelujah. All right, verse 15. And the mean man shall be brought down. The mighty man shall be humble, and the eyes of the, lo of the lofty shall be humble. Now, what this means is that pride is going to be broken. What does pride do? Pride goes before the fall. If you don't get rid of that pride, you're going to fall, and when you're going to fall into a devil's hell. Because what does Jesus hate more than anything else? A proud look and a lying <laughs> tongue. And why he, he put that above everything. And the third thing out of the seven is hands that shed innocent blood. Hallelujah. I thought about last week when the so-called speech is given. And he said, I will not sign anything that will stop abortion. Let all of them jumped up, clapped their hands. Yeah. And I thought to myself, now, you think that's pleasing to the Father when he looks down? Now, if you had all power in your hand and you could say, well, I'll just show you you're not going to do it any longer, what would you do? Man, think about that. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, he didn't have to take none of that. Because your religion is going to have a lot to do with what's coming out of your mouth. Hmm. Your religion is going to have a oh, lot yeah. to do with what's coming oh, yeah. out of your oh, mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But when you look at things that's going on, children being molested, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sold into slavery, sex slaves, all this, that, and other, teenage girls, boys, and you had all that power, what would you do? It's a good thing we don't. It's a good thing we don't. Yeah. Now, what if that would happen to one of theirs? But you see, they don't have to worry about that because they got guards around them. They make their children to watch like a hawk day and night. Hallelujah. All right, verse 16. Right. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall sanctify the righteous. 
So God will, when we exalt God and lift him up, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And that's where the blessing, that's where your protection comes in at. And that was Psalms chapter 37, verse 25 says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And you think of back, back in the days of Pharaoh, when the darkness came, well, the children of Israel was in a place called Goshen. Out for that quite good while, out for how long it was, there was total darkness in Egypt. But in Goshen, everything went on just as normal as night and day. They was not doing their business, everything else. And they were sitting over in total darkness. And that's what that's going to be one of the worst things about hell is total darkness. If you go up into a coal mine, you've never been in one. When you turn around, you see a light back that big around. When you start getting the woolies. Guys, so let's go a little bit further. I said, mm, as far as I'm going. Oh, come on. I said, don't, don't take a hold of me. <laughs> don't, you, don't you try to pull. I, I, I'm going out of here, buddy. He was picking at me. You know, he, I didn't have nothing to worry about. I said, mm, I didn't have no light on my, I didn't have no light on, you know. This is as far as I'm going. You could just feel that darkness. I mean, it's, you know, uh, things like that. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But when we exalt him, when we lift him up and we tell him we love him and we do what the word of God says to do, he has a protection agency second to none because he's not going to let nothing happen to his children. That's why he says in uh, Matthew 18 and 6, says, when they said, uh, bring the children to me and I can bless them. And he said it would be better than anybody offending one of my little ones it'd be better that a millstone was tied around his neck. He was cast in the deepest depth of the sea than to offend one of my little ones. And most everybody thinks that's a baby that, uh, you know, you hold your hand. Well, that, that's true too. But the same thing goes for me and you. What are we to Jesus? We, we just like a little baby. We a little lost lamb. And thank God said, I hold the seven seas. This is a sea now. Look at the Mediterranean, big as it is. I hold the seven seas in the palm of my hand. Whew. We serve a mighty God, a great big God. And if that's not capital punishment, what would it be? Now, a millstone, you see them up there, that, they'll probably weigh at least 4,000 pounds or something like that. Tie one of them on your neck and be cast, throw that over in Smith Mountain, or you're going to get out. Now, you're going to be fish bait. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. <clears throat> Verse 17. Then shall the lambs feed after their manna, and the wasted place of the fat ones shall eat strange uh, shall strangers eat. But what do you have? What will a stranger give you? Nothing much time. Hard times. All right. Sometimes a stranger gives you one family. Sometimes will. But get to this point now. Whose voice does the sheep follow? The master. No, think that. The shepherd. That's it. The shepherd masters the same thing. That shepherd. What did David say in Psalm 23? The Lord, thy shepherd, I what? Shall not want. Right, why? Because we hear that voice. That's just like. Elliot, hear that Jeep come down the driveway yeah. up off that table, just like your dog. What do they do? They know mama's coming. They're going to greet it. Mm -hmm. right, that's what he's saying. When I speak to you, it's just like you come to me. And the night I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I was thinking about <laughs> quitting going to church. And uh, I thought, well, I, you know, Lord, I was looking for something and I didn't find it. <laughs> All of a sudden, I hear the voice says, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. And I thought, what's he? And I looked up, and I saw a figure of a man with no face, but in a white robe. And I wound up at the altar, and Paul Johnson, 
I don't know what he was saying. Because talk some more, talk some more. He was happier than I was. In the verse, in the chapter in the verse was Matthew 28, 11. Come unto me, all you the heavy laden burden, I'll give you rest. So that's what Christ wants us to do. All right. Now we go through a series of woes here. Verse 18. Woe to them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and seeing that it is where a cart rope. And what happens with a rope? If you put it around your neck and you keep drawing it and drawing it and drawing it. And eventually, like a snake, well, of course, a snake does to an animal. Right. That's what he's talking. But he's talking about the spiritual part here. When his soul's not fed, when you get to the point to where you have anger, you have get ticked off for this little thing. You have no joy, peace, the nine gifts of the fruit of the spirit. You don't have one of them. Nothing being manifested in your life. The devil just slowly, but surely puts that cord and it'll be a cord of bitterness. It'll be a cord of this, that, and other. And what happens? You wind up and some people can't take it. They try to find the easy way out. All right, verse 19. What say? Let him make speed and hasten to his work that he may see and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know him. Now, what does that mean? That means if we've done all we can do, and we pray and we seek and we ask, then I think about Daniel when he started praying. He didn't get the answer until the 21st day. But he said, I heard you the first day. But because the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia there represented the devil, a fallen angel. And he hindered his prayers. And I heard, I heard a, lot, a lot of women say, Lord, we're going to pray you out of here. We're going to pray heaven down and send you out. And when we used to go to church first started out, if we didn't stay there three or four hours on Sunday night, something was wrong. We pray and pray and pray. We say, wonder who's going to get happy tonight? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Man, you talk about some praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the only thing that brings blessing down is what we send up. If you don't send nothing up, won't nothing come down. I mean, that's just the way it is. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. Underline this. And, and good evil. Look what the world's doing today. Well, well just because uh, they stole this. Now, California's talking about having red light districts in counties out there. Legalizing prostitution. What's that going to bring? It's going to be a lot of women going to be mistreated when it comes to the pay scale. But get that mindset. What kind of people is looking over them? What kind of... All through the Bible, look at Samson, the most powerful man in the world. But he got his eyes off of God and got his eyes off Delilah. And what did she do? Oh, Samson, my love, my sweetheart, my honeycomb, my everything. And she, everything she was doing was to find out what was wrong for him for money. Because the Philistines, if you can find his power, we'll give you, we'll make you a rich woman. She didn't care if they burnt his eyes out. She didn't care what happened. And what if somebody says, well, I got a 15-year-old. What? How much can you get for her? Oh, we can get $1,000 a night. What does it do to that child? That'll support everything I want. That's a lady who used to live on the road. She, she was doing that. She was prostituting her daughter. Not now, though. Hallelujah. All right. Who put darkness for light? When you live in the darkness, you never know the light of the gospel. 
What is delight? It's when you walk into the light of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the light. In me, there's no darkness. Why? Darkness cannot comprehend the light. Now, if we cut this bulb off, we can comprehend that darkness, but the darkness can't prevent the light. And the devil is darkness. Everything about him is darkness. There's no light in him. There's no love in him. There's no peace in him. There's no joy in him. So what's it going to be in hell? Mass confusion, hatred, darkness, bitterness. It's going to be some. It's going to be some nice people down there. Somebody you like to hang out with, huh? Child molesters, you name it, they're going to be there. Glory to God, Hallelujah. And light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. How many times you ever hear it say, "Boy, that used to be the sweetest person." And they say, now, you know, you say something to them, maybe this is, God, they mean that hateful, that arrogant. What in the world's happened to them? The only time they smile when they get a coat for hanger stuck in their mouth. <laughs> I mean, look at most of the people. You see the joy in the light. I mean, get with it. You better hear you talk to oh, you don't know what I've been going through. And the devil would jump on you and try to destroy you and keep you in darkness. That's what his job is. Yeah. He's what? He's a fallen angel. He was the most beautiful angel ever created. But he wasn't satisfied with what he had. Hallelujah. You could take these people look so sad and lonely, put a few drinks in them, and somebody beating on a guitar, man, can't he play? Like myself. What you said the other night tickled me up. Perry one time when somebody was playing, he said, uh, what's he doing to that band, Justin? I don't know. Oh, he said, he. they say he's clawing it. He can't play it a lick. <laughs> Sound like he's clawing it. <laughs> he told me what that. He said, I've done something the hardly know of the man's ever done. You've never done it. I said, so I don't know. He said, I know you have. I said, what is it, Perry? Just about everybody I talked to, I had to look up at them. <laughs> oh, he's so short. But... <laughs> he's so short. <laughs> I said, maybe some, when somebody came in here, yeah. <laughs> I think about little Marty. He was about, yeah. ain't about bit eye to eye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but look how many people today are so bitter. It's because they don't have a, they don't have a joy and a love of God in their life. What did Jesus say in the last part of John 10, 10? I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And even the millionaires are more happy. Millionaires right. are more happy. Right. I mean, you, you can see it in people's you faces. Nothing, you're more happy again. Right. I meet people all the time that used to go to church and this and that and the other. The people used to live right up there. They first come here, I was still drinking and carousing, and and they said, uh, you need to quit that. And their daughter fell in love with me. They thought it was nothing like me. I'd give up a few pieces of candy and stuff like that. And I saw what one we saw a couple years ago, and it was Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, they had one going to church. They separated. No joy, no happiness in the family. And I thought, my God. A few years ago, that's all I heard was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Then they never mentioned Jesus. But that's what that darkness will do. That's what that party lifestyle will do. That's what the devil will do. He'll carry you out there in the deep water, then what? Abandon you. And sometimes people will say, well, how can I come back? Then he convince them, Jesus don't love you. Jesus don't want you. What did the devil try to do to Jesus? He said, if your know, angels have charge over you, jump off this tall building. Commit suicide. The devil tried every way he could to kill Jesus. Why? He didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. The devil knows the Bible better than any of us put together. Because he said, if I can keep him from going to that cross, when they, when his, when he said this finished, he can purchase everything they're gonna need, and all they've got to do is have enough sense to follow him. But if I can keep them from following him, 
I want them to praise me. I want them to worship me. I want them to do this. I want them to do that. Man, you just come in and play. He said, I'm the, uh, I'm the best piano player to ever put fingers on it. I thought to myself, that won't last long, buddy. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. I can't play for these. I can't wait. Think. That sadness is going to set in one day. That anxiety is going to set in one day. And that darkness is going to come. Because the devil will do all of that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, verse 21. Woe unto them who, wise, who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. This is people think they're above everything. When the president, I'm not going to answer that question. You don't want to answer. And when the judge sits up there and looks at you, he glues in on you. I don't like their looks. I'm going to give him five years. Well, who can stop it? A lot of times people just look at you and say, I don't like you for no reason at all. What if Jesus is like it? We'd be nasty. We'd have nothing to look to, no one to look to, no one to, nothing. What kind of future we have? Well, think when the rapture is gone, when the church is just closed out, what would the people who's bit backslid and looking for, looking for somebody, what they going to find? They gonna find misery, 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 misery. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <coughs> Why? Because Solomon thought, I'm not Solomon. Uh, Samson thought, well, who can defeat me? Who can stop me? And what happened before he died? He was like an animal tied to a string and walked around and around and around, making fun of him. Then what did he want? Lord, let me feel that power one more time. Let me feel it one more time. And the preacher said, you know, Samson didn't make it. I thought, what do you mean he didn't make it? He committed suicide. Well, how did a blind man know what he was tied to to start with and what he was pulling over? <laughs> he didn't know which way to run. Uh, just shut your eyes and try to cut the lights off in here and say, I want you in yonder back in 30 seconds. You kill your chest trying to get out back. And you'd open your eyes. Hallelujah. That's what God does to us. He opens our eyes. Now, verse 22. Woe unto them who are mighty to drink wine and men of strong and men of strength who mingle strong drink. He goes back to that. Why does he keep going back to it? What does it mean? I mean, a mixed drink. How many people will go so hippies? Sit in there. You know how many times I've been to hippies? They have a, sometimes they want to have something up there. Say, you go and no. And I'll tell you what. I'm not going to support nothing that serves something like it, stands up for something like it. Right. Now, we can have all we want here. They tell me, well, we're going to have a meeting there. I, I'm not going. Why? Because I hate alcohol. I know what it done to me. It almost cost it. I know what it costs people. And I hate what it does to people. There's nothing pretty about it. There's nothing about a Rocky Mountain High. There's nothing about beautiful Clyde Dale horses. There's nothing like Miller Time and on and on and on the way they advertise it. It's nothing but a silent killer. That's all it is. Glory, hallelujah. Verse 23, which justify the wickedness for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. God says, I can't, what can God do with a drunk man or oh, a half drunk woman? Somebody's high every day. What can you do for them? <laughs> And you wonder why sometimes, why do they lock people up? A lot of them, it saves their life. Until they get out and drink again. Right. And some people, you know, they'll get their life straightened out. This is not worth living. It's nothing there. It's no good. Hallelujah. 
The only thing will change it is the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> but most of the people don't see no harm in it. It is harmless to start with the way it looks, but it's deadly. You ever seen somebody in DTs? Yes. I've seen it several times. I've seen him almost chew the tongue off. Man, one morning, he was so bad, he was trying to take a drink. And he, they had to hold him and pour it in him. And he got another drink in it, and he was just as calm as he could be. Yeah. One morning, they was talking about, they was, eating, they, they was eating breakfast, and the man was trying to eat some eggs, and he was throwing them up. <laughs> I got to laughing at him. He, he went out of the, the restaurant. And there was a surveyor. One morning, the man in there. I looked back and seen his feet sticking straight up. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Called a rescue squad for him. Hallelujah. He never did come back. The devil, because he just felt like I'd done something. And he made this excuse. He said, people want to know too much about your business. One's good as another. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> All right, verse 24. <coughs> Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble, and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rotten, and their blossom shall be go up as dust, because they cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despise despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. I think about last week when the uh, Super Bowl spent $40 million to have those two little clips about Jesus. Some of the distinguished congressmen said they thought that was appalling. It was offensive because they was promoting a man named Jesus Christ and his theories. Now, they, they're the type of people you need to put in the office and vote for, isn't it? Yeah. When a person will not recognize Jesus Christ, I don't care what profession it is. They won't honor him. Are they Christians? The Bible don't say they are. He, say, he plainly says this, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father and his, what? Holy wow. angels. Hallelujah. So why does people get offended at God's word? He had Turner said he'd go to church if they didn't preach about adultery. <laughs> and you know why? Yeah, too, bro. <laughs> because he was doing it. And it convicted it. Well, that's what it was for. That's what the word, of, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Yeah. It first of all convicts us of our sins. A lot of people, when they get into conviction, what do they do? They run from God. They should run to God. That's what he's telling you. Yeah, that's that's what he's telling me. And I finally had enough sense to say, Denver, this ain't working what you're doing. Knock on wood. And uh, Mama prayed and prayed. And, you know, the Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12, pray that it'll heap coals of fire on their head. And it finally melted that block out up there. So <laughs> And it went on from here, then where does it go then? Into here. And when it come, when everything comes out of here, everything works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what happens when we don't serve God? Six thirty. Mm -hmm. We just like a stubble. We just like fire. What do you do? In the message this morning, it says when your works is put into fire, what happens? What happens to wood, hay, and stubble? It's burned up because there's no stone there. There's nothing precious there. There's nothing in there. The word of God's not there. So what do you do? <coughs> nothing you can do. But so many will not turn back <coughs> to Christ. And all they get to do is just say, Lord. But he says it's <laughs> seven times harder to come back. And what that means is God says, you got to show me something before I believe you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. All right, let's go to uh, 
Matthew chapter 18, not forgiveness. I like this here. That's pretty there. Rejoice. And verse 21. Matthew 18 and verse 21. Now, Peter had a little bit of problems because of his pride and his arrogance and his self-righteousness. But God got him worked out. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? When he's having a problem with one of the brothers, didn't say who it was. And I forgive him. Till seven. Now, Peter's saying, Lord, I think I'll forgive him seven times. Now he's waiting on the answer from Jesus. Jesus answered him, and I say not unto you until se uh, seven times, but until 70 times seven. So how many times is that? Seventy-seven, seven. Mm -mm, seventy times seven. Oh, wow. That's four hundred and ninety. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, really, why is Jesus doing this? He's stressing forgiveness. What was the last prayer he prayed before he said, "Lord, I commit thy spirit into thy hands." Forgive them what. Well, they know not what they do. All right. When people don't understand, we deal with people that don't understand the Bible, anything like that. They offend us. They talk about us. They put us down. But how many? And he said he missed that for one day. It need to be. They. It's so hard for us to understand that. But well, look what they've done to Jesus. How they spit on him. How they beat him. Everything. And everything about it was a lie. And if you ever watch a Passion of Christ, the movie, when a man is toting the cross for Christ, Joseph Simeon, he said, I don't want to have nothing to do with this man. I ain't no follower of this man. Well, he, get over and help him carry that cross. I will. And it went a little ways and Jesus failed. Then the man stumbled down with it and he looked. Their eyes made contact. And he said, why are you doing this? And Jesus never, never said a word to him. And the man said, he's doing it for me. It clicked right down him. And the guy was going to hit him that whip again. He said, don't you do that. Don't you do that. He got up and wrenched it up, carried Jesus up there. Don't you lay another hand on him. And he realized, he forgive me right here. That's a power of forgiveness. Maybe filthy word we ever spoke of. Every lie we've ever told, everything we've ever done. He looked down and said, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And he's making this point to Peter. Peter, you've got to forgive that man seven times. It's not enough. Look how many times I forgave you, Peter. Think back in your own life when you denied me three times. I still forgave you. Hallelujah. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Who is that king that looks after his servants? Who is Jesus going to be when he comes back? King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And what do we owe him? Oh, everything. Everything. Oh, we have more. That's right. 
What if he had to say it on the cross to that angry crowd, that riot? Most of them, a lot of them was drunk and everything else. They was gambling for what he had. But what did he say? Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I think back when he said, Lord, forgive them for Turner. Charles, he didn't know what he was doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remember all the prayer requests, Tony, this morning. And uh, remember uh, uh, the Dillon family and the uh, uh, oh, heck, uh, Pondexter family. And uh, remember all these youngsters that they get strung out on this, that, the other. A couple of them, if the law hadn't get to the house, they wouldn't be here today. And really pray for these police officers and people like that. And they are out there to protect and serve us. We just need to understand that. And does anybody have a prayer request you want to make mention of? Anybody else? That's me, sister in law, Cynthia Dowdy, first grandson was the one that passed away last year. Mike Aaron. Okay, that was my, okay. Yeah, that was connected. What was his father's name? Michael Aaron. What about his grandfather? His, Michael, I'm talking about Michael's father. Uh, Johnny Bowie. Oh, okay. I got you now. Yeah, all righty. That one was this year last Wednesday. That was uh, Tina. She Tina. got to have uh, two new youngs. Praise the Lord. And uh, remember, uh, all, uh, remember all our church family, Sister Virginia, honey, we really praying for you and everybody. And people couldn't make it this morning and everybody else. God bless you, Brother Jeff. Love you, buddy. Hope you had a wonderful service today. And let us go to the Lord and pray. Oh, I feel his presence here tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your, the forgiveness hand that you reached down to each and every one of us. Lord, it's a hand of mercy. It's a hand of love. And Lord, all we have to do is reach our hand up to you. You'll never let us go. Lord, we pray to you. All the families lost a loved one this week. Lord, I just done a funeral you know, a couple of hours ago. And I looked in their eyes and saw the passion of their father, how they loved so much. And Lord, we know what it's like. But we have an assurance in our heart today. One day there's going to be a family reunion. Like nothing never known to mankind before. <clears throat> and I pray, Lord Jesus, for everyone out there tonight who think they've drifted too low or they've drifted too far from the shore. I love what you said in the book of Jude. You can be slipping into the fire. And if you cry, I can reach and pull you back. And Lord, I thank you for every blessing, for every spiritual blessing you bestow upon us. And, Lord, I pray that what's going on in Kentucky will happen in Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, every state in the union. I pray that there will be something that will start in these young people. We don't need no fancy preachers. We don't need no fancy singers. All we need is a movement and a stirring of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. And, Lord, I pray it will sweep across this nation, that it will wake this nation up. And I pray that what all of these people will turn away from the enemy and the powers of darkness, Lord Jesus, commit their life to you. Oh, what it would be like if you turned the news on and they was talking about there's a stirring in North Carolina, there's a stirring in Roanoke, Virginia, there's a stirring in Louisville, Kentucky, there's a stirring in uh, Austin, Texas. People are just serving God. Sometimes they've even shut the workplace down to go serve God. What that would be, what that would mean. And Lord, we know you. Every we know everything you have is under control, and we love you and we praise you for everything that you do. And Lord, we thank you for every blessing. For it's in your precious holy name we pray, and let all of God's children say, "Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord!" And remember how much God loves you, and He will forgive you if you come with a clean heart and pure hands and cry out to Him. He'll forgive you. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day. God bless you and love you. Ian Stream, right?
whatever y'all want to do. Just I, text I, me and let me know. Thursday, no. I got a miracle. Got Come in, Chris. Uh, I was with Joe, and we went in Canada's to get a sandwich. And I tried getting him to not do it, but he didn't listen to me. He never listened to me, anything I say. Anyway, um, he pulled out in front of the big tractor trailer. He got the trailer about to hit us. And the tractor trailer stepped on his brakes. And, and that's all the safest. Hi, y'all. So, Lord was looking at 